Hey everyone, welcome to Medication Monday. This is where we go over a different EMT drug that we administer out in the field. We do it specifically in EMT drug card format. As always, follow your local protocol and scope of practice. Enjoy. Today's medication is called amiodarone, and amiodarone has a few brand names, but a couple of examples are cordarone and paserone. So it falls under the class of class 3 antidysrhythmics. Mechanism of action is, or how it works in the body, is that it blocks the potassium channels, and it also interferes with the calcium and sodium channels. This increases the action potential and decreases AV conduction, essentially slowing down the heart rate. Your indications will be ventricular fibrillation, pulseless ventricular tachycardia, management of of wide complex tachycardia or wide complex tachycardia that's not responding to other treatments. So let's say you have a very symptomatic patient that is in ventricular tachycardia with a pulse and uh, cardioversion isn't working. You can also try amiodarone in these cases. As always, guys, before we get into dosages, please abide by your local protocol. Just because my protocol is one thing does not mean your local protocol is the same. So your dose for pulseless VFib or VTAC, the initial dose will be 300 milligrams IV or IO. So this is obviously during the course a cardiac arrest. So you're also giving epinephrine, oxygen, etc. Your second dose, if they're still in pulseless VFib or VTAC, is going to be 150 milligrams IV or IO. So sustained VTAC or VTAC with a pulse, you're going to give 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. So you may repeat this as needed up to 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. Your pediatric dose for pulseless VFib or VTAC is 5 milligrams per kilogram. For sustained VTAC or VTAC, VTAC with a pulse is going to be 5 milligrams per kilogram over 20 to 60 minutes, and you can repeat this up to twice. Your contraindications are going to be second or third degree AV blocks, except for those with pacemakers, CHF, cardiogenic shock, severe sinus node dysfunction, and bradycardia. Okay, so some adverse reactions of amiodarone are going to be fatigue, dizziness, flushing, pulmonary edema, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, nausea, cough, hypotension, bradycardia, Cardia. Some drug interactions. So there is an increased chance of bradycardia and hypotension, AV blocks, sinus arrest when this is given specifically with other beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Also, how it's supplied. It is typically 150 milligrams in a 3 ml dark vial. Okay, just a few side notes about amiodarone. Do not shake the vial and draw it up slowly to avoid bubbles. Also, it cannot be administered through an endotracheal tube. A lot of medications can be administered through an ET tube, but amiodarone is one of the few that cannot. Also, you want to monitor your patient for hypotension, especially like we talked about in the previous slide, if they're on beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Your peak effect is typically between 10 to 15 minutes. The onset is immediate, but the peak effect is typically between 10 to 15 minutes. Just be aware that it may cause new dysrhythmias or make the current one that you're seeing worse. Amiodarone can cause skin sensitivity, so just be aware of that. Also, grapefruit and grapefruit juice should be avoided while on this drug because it has potentiating effects. So it's almost like you're receiving a larger dose than you actually are. Remember to abide by your local protocol and scope of practice. This is purely informational for those in the EMS field and never meant to be used in the place of local protocol or formal education. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Monday. Bye!